What's going on, everybody? Appreciate you checking in. So we just got word that Las Vegas Raiders decided to cut and part ways with DJ Fluker. And, you know, we just brought him on at the tail end of last year. And I think that because of just all the hype that was brought on when he came into the league, um, I, I think there was a chance that even though he's on the older end, right, I believe he's around 33 years old, we might have been able to revive his career just a little bit, maybe get a solid year, possibly two out of him, maybe not as a starter, but a possible rotation piece if there were injuries that were to occur. And so I thought it was a good job. I thought it was a good move bringing him in at the end of the year. But unfortunately, and it's kind of coincidental that, you know, Tom Telesco was the one that drafted him back in 2013, I believe. He was a first round draft pick. And now and that was when Tom Telesco was with the San Diego Chargers. And now Tom Telesco is with us, and he is the one that cuts him and removes him from the building. And so, you know, we would decide to move on from him. But again, thought he could have been a good rotational piece. Maybe we could have squeezed another, a possible year or two out of him uh, to help this offense align. But unfortunately, he's he's gone and he's, and he's out the building. Now, um, how do we address this? situation because we still need to address the right guard right tackle situation there's a lot of talks of us moving pieces around dylan parham you know moving him possibly to the right guard situation where he did thrive a few times in the, in the past couple seasons and there mumford you know what do we do do we slot him in at, at, at slot him in at that right tackle spot or we do we move him down and maybe put him at the right guard spot you know there's a lot of things that can still take place a lot of moves, but at the end of the day, we still have to address the right guard and right tackle situation. And how do we do that? And now getting rid of DJ Fluker, we now not only do need to address the starters, but we still need to address rotational pieces just in case injuries happen. And they always happen every single year. And so that's all I want to dive into. So before I get into it, my next giveaway 3,000 subscribers. Once I get there, I'm going to hit you guys with another giveaway. It'll be my fourth giveaway since starting this channel back in October of last season. So, you know, I just started this channel, but this is my way of saying thank you and giving back. So if you want to be involved in that, be a subscriber, hit that uh, subscribe button. And if you could, please hit that like button. Hit that like button. It helps me out. Just kind of push the video a little bit. It helps me get, you know, my thoughts and my... Um, just, I, I love communicating and exchanging back and forth in that comment section. It allows me to do it even more. So hit that like button if you can. I would definitely appreciate it. So here's the biggest question. How do you want to see us address the right guard situation in the draft? Because I think that is right now um, the biggest question mark. You know, there's a lot of people saying that we might address the right tackle situation in the draft. You know, you got a lot of good right tackles. I think that this tackle class uh, coming into in this year's draft is, is pretty deep. There's a lot of talent. I think the guard um, position in this upcoming draft is extremely top heavy. Once you get out of those first, those top three guards that I think might go in the second and third round, once you get past that, I think it falls off dramatically. And so how do we want to, how do we want to, address it all right so let me know in the comments down below do you want us to address it in free agency and i'm going to go over some guards still left in free agency that we can uh, possibly pick up or do you want to see it see us address it in the draft let me know in the comments down below now the left side of our line is solidified it's pretty set in stone you got colton miller on the left left side uh, uh, as our left tackle right we got dylan parham as our left guard and we got andre james sitting there right in the center. So we got that left side and center pretty much solidified. We did just re-sign Jordan Meredith. We brought him back. Again, I think he's just a rotational piece, which is good, but we still need more depth and we still need to solidify the starters. Now, keep in mind, this is kind of how I want to address it. And this is just my feedback. Let me know if you disagree in the comments down below because I love hearing everybody's feedback. If we decide to address the right tackle situation in the draft early, I would much rather bring in a veteran guard. I don't want to see us start two rookies side by side. I think it's a horrible situation, especially given the, given, given the fact that there's a true reality. We might find ourselves uh, with a quarterback situation where we're starting Aiden O'Connell or possibly Gardner Minshew. And, and also, 
we didn't bring back Josh Jacobs. So we didn't pour a ton of money into the running back position. So I want to be able to invest or go heavy into the offensive line, protect the quarterback, whoever's going to be standing back there. But also we need an offensive line that can create running lanes and natural running gaps for those running backs to run through. Because there, the picture that Tom Telesco is painting right now is that we're going to have a running back by committee situation. So you better invest heavily in that offensive line, go after it and attack it early in the draft. And so let's, let's take a look at the free agency makeup right now. All right. Um, actually one question, let me know guys, who do you want with that first pick? If we're sitting there at 13, if we don't jump up and get a quarterback, like a lot of us want to, okay, I'll throw that out there. But if we're sitting at 13, those top quarterbacks are off the board. Do you want us to pick a right tackle in the draft? Like my favorite is Talisi Fuaga. I think he would be a monster. If we don't get Talisi Fuaga, if he's already taken before us, either we get JC Latham. That's my second favorite right tackle in this draft. We could possibly trade back a handful of spots and still get them and stockpile some picks and really ramp up this roster with this uh, rookie draft class, which I think there's a lot of players. There's a lot of talent in this rookie draft cl class that can help us in the positions of need. So let me know in the comments down below. If we're sitting at 13, what do you want to see us do? But first, let's look at free agency, right? There are a couple names that we can bring in in uh, in the free agency, some veterans, we can uh, stick at the right guard spot. Again, if we draft a right tackle, you put a veteran, sit him right next to him and help him teach him the game, help him the ways to communicate in the National Football League, you know, makes their transition coming to the league just a little bit easier, you know, as a rookie. And so a couple guys to look out for Mark uh, Glowinski played with the Giants last year. He did, he did very well with the Giants. That's a name to look out for. One of the guys that I like now that the guard position, the wave of you know top guard free agents has come and gone. Who are the next guys? And one guy that, look, if we don't address it as a starting position in the draft, I would like us to bring back Greg Van Roden, right? He played for us last year. He was actually, a, 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 outside of Colton Miller, he was the best rated offensive lineman on our uh, offensive line last year. I believe PFF graded him with a 75, which is a pretty high grade for some of the guards last year. And so, you know, Greg Van Roten, he played a lot of snaps. I believe uh, he, I believe he only had five penalties last year, which wasn't bad at all. You know, given the fact that he went up against a lot of very good interior D linemen last year. He only gave up five penalties and he gave up zero sacks. So guys, I think bringing him back, getting one more good year at a, at a Greg Van Roten and then maybe addressing it in free agency or address it in the draft next year could be uh, a good idea now, but we still need rotational pieces. One guy that could be brought in as a rotational piece. Again, I think we can get him at a really good inexpensive price is Lucas Patrick. Lucas Patrick played for Luke Getze last year with that Chicago Bears offensive line. Now, I know what all you guys are going to say. That Chicago Bears offensive line was not very good. And I agree with you. As a whole, as a unit, not very good. But if you go look and, and see, Lucas Patrick gave up no sacks last year. He was very aggressive in the run game, did very well in Luke Getz's system. And he played the majority of the season. He only – the he, he didn't play the last game of the season. I'll be honest. I think it was because partially he knew he was going to free agency, didn't want to risk an injury. And I think he knew that the, the Chicago Bears were possibly trying to tank. So why try to injure yourself? And so he played basically the entire season last year. Yes, he incurred uh, quite a few penalties. I think he incurred uh, in the double digits. I think it was around 11 penalties. But I think a lot of it had to do with he was going against some good competition, some good defense alignment. But also, he had to make up for a lot of the trash offensive line play that was sitting around him. And so, look, it, again, it's just a rotational piece. But he also knows Luke Getz's system. So he can come in and be that second coach on that offensive line and really help out a lot of these new guys to the system to get up to speed quickly. But again, Lucas Patrick, it's just a rotational piece to possibly bring in. Now, that is 
the free agency side. Let me know in the comments down below, who do you think we should bring in in free agency if you want to address it that way? What is there a name that I'm missing that's not on my radar? Let me know down below. Now let's look at the draft prospects. Again, I told you in the beginning, I think this, this draft class is very top heavy. I think once you, um, once you miss out on the first, you know, the first, second, or third top guards in this draw, this draft class, I think it drops off pretty dramatically. So there's a couple guys that I, I do like coming out of this draft, but again, it's kind of more in the later rounds. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you have someone on, on uh, in that guard position that you think should we should address uh, possibly in this draft class. And so one of the guys, one of the guys that I like, you know, bas basically kind of later in the rounds, one is uh, Zach Zenter out of Michigan. I think he's a guy that we could probably look at. Later in the rounds, I know he's coming off of a, an injury, but I believe the latest reports are saying that he's going to be ready to go. All right, so and we could possibly get him in the third round. He might drop, might drop into the fourth, and that's where I'm, I want to start looking at guards. Another guy that I really like, again, these are later round type of guys. One of the guys is Jarrett Kingston, um, the guard out of USC. Now, again, just like I said about Lucas Patrick, right? USC's offensive line as a whole unit was not very good. But if you go back and look at this guy's film, I think he's going to bring the mentality that Antonio Pierce wants. When he goes, when he's, when he, his, his approach to run blocking is he wants to put you in the dirt. You look at him, he's a hard nosed football player and he, and he does not play at, the, he doesn't play to the whistle. He plays through the whistle. He goes and he wants to put you in the ground. And I love that mentality out of him. And he showed it play in and play out. He was extremely healthy. He actually didn't, if I remember correctly, he gave up either no sacks or a very, very low number of sacks last year playing that on that USC line. And so, you know, Zach Zinter, Jerk Kingston, those are two guys that I want to look at later in the rounds. Now, again, if a guy drops um, like Christian, uh, I think it's Christian Mahogany, I believe his, his name is, um, if he, I think he's out of Boston College, Maybe if that's a name that if he starts to drop in that third or fourth round, he might be a guy I want to take a look at. Again, I want to address the guard position kind of later in the rounds. I'd much rather us address it in free agency, get a guy, get a veteran guy to sit next to a potential rookie right tackle and help him with the transition entering into the football, uh, into the NFL. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I appreciate you sticking with me. If you could, please hit the like button subscribe turn those notifications again next giveaway at 3,000 subscribers and i'm getting there pretty quickly so if you want to be including that make sure you hit that subscribe button so again appreciate you guys have yourself a great great rest of your day and i'll see you guys on the next video i'm out